Hello everyone and welcome to Deakin College. Today's presentation will be regarding our Diploma of Construction Management. Before we do get started though, I do just want to um, go through a little bit of housekeeping. Um, we do have some panellists on board today to assist you with any questions that you do have in regards to your studies. If you wish to ask any of these questions, there is a Q&A section in the tab. So you can click on that section and ask your question uh, in there during the presentation. But we also will have uh, a live question and answer session at the end of the presentation. Um, so if you do wish to ask anything, please put your question in there um, rather than raising your hand. So I won't hold you any longer. Um, we will move on to our academic manager, Joe Williams, to begin the presentation today. Great, thanks, Danielle. Uh, good morning, uh, good afternoon, or good evening to everybody joining, depending on which country you're joining from. Um, thank you for taking the time today to attend the webinar. Um, the Diploma of Construction Management is a course that we've had at the college for just over a year now. So we're delighted to be able to share it with some more people overseas and locally in Australia as well. In more detail today, we're going to look at the diploma. Um, certainly the units that you will study and how you would study that and that is mostly online obviously at the moment. We'll go through some of the recommendations for which units you would study during your course and then specifically answer some of your questions. We've tried to identify some questions up front that you may be wondering about but as Danielle mentioned we'd love to hear from you and hear any other questions that you have um, either during um, the chat or at the very end so please feel free to ask those questions. All right, so firstly, the Diploma of Construction Management um, is a diploma which is equivalent to the first year of the bachelor degree and it articulates or progresses into the second year of the Bachelor of Construction Management Honours degree at Deakin University. That degree is a four year degree, so your first year would be in the diploma, then followed by three years to finish the degree at the university. You progress across to the degree um, with eight credit points, which is the full first year of credit, and that goes across as advanced standing. Our main objective in the diploma is not only to teach you the academic content that you'll need, but also to help you develop and the specific skills that you would need, not only for university for the second, third and fourth years, but also for when you um, work in the construction management field after you complete your course. Specifically, here are the eight core units that you will study. And again, these are exactly the same eight units as the first year bachelor degree. Typically, the first four units are the ones you would do in your first trimester. So that would be construction finance, building safety, building materials science, and construction projects one. And then in subsequent trimesters, either your second or third trimester, you would study building economics, building information modelling, construction and structures one, and construction projects two. In addition to those eight core units, and there are no electives in this course, there are two um, non-credit bearing, so zero credit point units that are done online um, that you're also required to complete during your, com your diploma. And those two are a safety induction program and an academic integrity unit. A typical course um, will go for 12 months or a shorter program does exist for eight months, which would be a two trimester program. In order to complete the course in eight months, you would need to take a full study load, which would be four credit bearing units in each trimester. And that is the maximum number of units you can take. In addition to those though, you would take those two zero credit bearing units I mentioned before. International students in Australia, when we're on campus, would normally need to study at least three units in their first trimester. So typically, a lot of students would do this course over three trimesters rather than two. For Australian students, in order to receive Centrelink benefits, government benefits, they must enrol in three units to be considered a full-time student. If anyone's not sure about what that would mean um, for you specifically for your situation, feel free to ask those questions at the end. 
Upon completing your diploma um, and you've passed those eight units, you need to achieve a certain WAM. Now a WAM is a weighted average mark, which is an average of those eight credit bearing units. And for this particular course, you need to achieve at least 50% for all of those units. And that is for both Australian domestic students as well as international students. You can't, you cannot transfer to Deakin University if you've not achieved that WAM, the weighted average mark of 50%. We hold transfer sessions each trimester to help students prepare for their transfer to the bachelor degree. And there's lots of information that's provided at the time about how to go about that. But at this point in time, the main thing for you to know is the WAM that you need for progression and that is 50. In addition to some students who do elect to stay on and study in postgraduate studies in the area of construction management, some students elect to go straight into the workforce. So the main career options that students typically go into after they've completed their degree would be a construction management role. Some students go into quantity surveying, property development, or managing large and small scale projects. Now students um, progress into these career options both here in Australia and overseas back in their home countries. So they are the typical options for careers. In the current environment, Deakin College is teaching online. So all of our units, all of our classes, assessments, etc., are online. And we'll go through what that means now. In order to join your online classes, we use Zoom just like we are today and we conduct all of those classes, most typically in two two hour sessions per unit per week. And you can access that link through on the right hand side there, there's a tile called Moodle. That is our main platform or software if you like, where all of the course content is kept and we'll show you what that looks like in the next slide. To access your material, as I mentioned, there will be a banner in Moodle that will say something like online class links. And you will be only able to access that if you were enrolled in that unit for that particular class. And there's an example there of some of the units that students would be studying and this is how they would access their class. Within each Moodle site, and they're all set up to look exactly the same, there's a number of different banners or sections on the left. If you take week four as an example, which is four weeks into the trimester, each week will look like this, where we'll have before class activities, during class activities, and after class activities for students to follow. The majority, obviously, of the during class activities is your class time with your teacher. But we also encourage students to complete the before class activities because that helps you prepare for what you'll be doing and studying during the class with your teacher. And then after class activities to reinforce what you have learnt during that particular class. In addition to your teacher, which is one of your main, main or primary uh, resources for you, we have a lot of other support networks available. So certainly you may speak to your teacher, obviously email at the moment is the best way, um, but you may also speak to them after class if you've got any questions. But we also have learning advisors and they run online workshops and they're also available for one-on-one -on -one assistance, also at the moment via Zoom. They're a great resource if you've got some particular learning skills, for example, or you need some support to help you set up time management, for example, or exam preparation. So we have a lot of services that are available to students, both across the college as well as one-on-one. -on -one. In addition to that, we also have a number of student learning mentors. Now these student mentors are normally students who have completed this course in the past, and we do have some, even in construction management, we've been operating a year, but we've got some of our ex-students come back and they're helping to be learning mentors. They're really helpful students to be able to contact if you need some clarity. Sometimes you don't wanna ask your teacher, you might wanna to talk to a student and that's okay. So they are available and you can book those online through that link there.
Now, in terms of assessments and exams, um, there's sort of two forms, if you like, of assessments. There's ongoing and consistent assessments that we have during the trimester, and they might be in the form of a quiz, a test, an oral presentation, might be an individual case study, or it could be a group case study. And all of those assessment content, materials, guidelines, the percent of what they're worth, etc., are all loaded into that Moodle site, which is a site we saw a couple of slides ago. But again, your teachers are your best resource to help you work through the requirements of the assessment and what you need to do to complete that successfully in the time frame required. Now, half of the units in the construction management diploma also have a final examination. Some of them don't, half of them don't. They have assignments that are due in the final week of the trimester. Exams at the moment in those four units are all conducted online. And at the moment, they're two hours and 15 minutes in duration. All of that information about exams is provided to you very clearly um, once you start in your course. But again, it will be showed in Moodle. So now we'll go on to the units, um, should you join us for the October intake, which is our next intake. This is just a very brief overview. There'll be a lot more information provided to you in your course outline, which we'll provide closer to the time. So the first unit most students, as I mentioned before, would typically take in their first trimester would be construction finance. And if anyone has studied accounting in the past, it is similar to accounting, but with a certain flavor, a certain emphasis on how to apply the accounting principles in the construction industry. Now there's a range of assessments for this particular unit and they range from individual assessments like tests as well as a group project and this is one of the units that has an exam at the end. The next student students would typically study in their first trimester is building safety which is unit code SRT141. This is a first year introduction level unit to maintain safety in the workplace, not only for yourself, but your colleagues. One of the key regulatory bodies, bodies here in Victoria that we need to follow is work cover. And there are a range of acts and regulations that we must follow. So this unit introduces you to that. Now I understand that some of you may be overseas and you would have your own regulatory bodies back in your home countries, Obviously that would be something you would need to learn upon your return, but the principles and the guidelines for safety would be similar. This unit does not have an exam at the moment. There's just a range of individual and group reports. The final part of this unit though, is what's called a white card, which is the very bottom line there. All students must complete a separate white card training course. Now we will help set that up for you. It's just simply a one day course um, and that allows you to be able to work on sites in Australia. And certainly within your course, you do do site visits. So this is a compulsory one day additional course that students need to do. All information about that is provided once you start. The next unit most students would typically study is building materials science. Now this is a slightly different focus. This is more about the materials used in the construction process and how the things like the weather, the environment can impact materials. There's a big focus in this unit on sustainability and energy and how to use that efficiently in the construction industry. Just like the construction finance unit, this unit also has an exam at the end of the trimester, but that builds up from a range of individual tests, reports, etc., to help you prepare for that exam. Students need to complete this, all assessments and achieve at least 40% in the exam to pass the unit. And then the final unit students would typically study in their first trimester is construction projects one. This explores the construction codes in the Australian building industry, which are national construction codes that are applied in Australia. Um, there's a really big emphasis on attempting to help students not only get exposure to what those construction codes are, but real examples of how to apply that 
in the workplace. So it's not just a lot of theory, there's a lot of practice um, and modelling as well. One of the things the students enjoy most about this particular unit is towards the end of the trimester, either one of two things happens. They build an actual model of a building in the workshop if we're online, sorry, if we're on campus, but at the moment we're online, so photos and images are created in lieu of that. And that process of building that is one that students really enjoy. Okay, we'll just move on to some of the questions. Um, with, if we can just click through to the next slide. Students um, quite often want to know at this point about their textbooks. So some units do have prescribed textbooks and you would learn about what those are from your teacher in the Moodle site. And all books are either able to be purchased as an ebook or can be borrowed electronically from the Deakin Library um, from the Waterfront Campus here in Geelong. All of our classes are recorded. So if you're not able for some reason to make a class or you miss the beginning and you want to go back and hear what was discussed, the link to that class, um, that Zoom link will be uploaded into Moodle and you can go back and refer to it later. It's also a good place to go to if you're preparing for an assignment and you know that that particular topic was covered in that week, it's a good place to go back and refer to and listen to again. In terms of equipment, um, look, all students really need at this point in time is to have a laptop um, and that obviously helps them prepare um, for their assessments as well as taking notes in class. Um, that's really all the equipment that's needed. There is some software that's needed further down the track, but that's much later in the course and that's something that we help um, you with with Deakin University. So at this stage, just a laptop is all you need. Our courses at the moment, our units are timetabled to run in Australian Eastern Standard Time from 11 a.m. to 9 p.m. Now we've typically tried to move to that timetable to accommodate as many different students from the different countries that we have students joining from. Typically though, when we're on campus, our timetable would start at 9 a.m. But at the moment, that's not what we're doing. We're trying to accommodate, as I said, as many different time zones as possible. So it's running from 11 until 9. We keep our classes small at Deakin College. We see a lot of benefit in students having um, fewer students in the class with more class time um, and access to their teachers. So we have a maximum of 30 students in any particular class. In terms of enrolment, enrolment will um, open in October and all students who have accepted their place will receive an email with all of the details about how to enrol. Now you can enrol yourself if you like or you can attend an uh, enrolment session um, and they will on that particular enrolment session walk you through all the steps on how to enrol. It'll also be at that point that you receive a course information guide, which is really what you'll need to help you pick your units. But essentially the four that I went through before would be the ones should you decide to join in October that you would need to pick. It'll be most likely me or one of my colleagues helping with that process. So I hope to see some of you then. In your first class, um, you will obviously meet your teacher. The teacher will give you an overview of the expectations of the topics, the assessments and what will be covered as well as the weeks of the trimester. Normally it's a 12 week trimester. I'll go through that in just a second. As I mentioned, classes are recorded each week and they'll be available for you to access later the following week normally in the Moodle page. Now, if you happen to fail a unit, um, you can repeat that unit the following trimester or the one afterwards. There's only one unit that you need to complete that's a prerequisite, one that has to be done before another, and that is SRE 170, Construction Finance. You need to have passed and completed that before you study Building Economics, which is SRE 270. Other than that, there's no other prerequisite unit. Okay, so we'll just quickly go to the next slide and we'll have a look at the trimester three dates. So this is a calendar of the dates for the trimester and you can see just in the top left hand corner on the 26th trimester three starts and that's week one. 
If you go down to the middle of the slide there, you can see our trimester break over the uh, Christmas period from around the 23rd of December up until the 5th of January. And then we start back on Wednesday that week. Then we go through for another three weeks before the exam week in that blue box. After that, there is a short three week break before the following trimester starts in March next year, which is trimester one. 2021. Okay, next slide. All right, so that concludes sort of the more formal part and overview of the course. And I'd like to throw it open to all of you to ask any questions and feel free um, to pop that into the, the Q&A section. Or if you'd like to go off mute, feel free. There's not too many of us today. So I'm happy to take any questions you have. Beautiful. Thank you so much, Joe. There has been a few questions that have come through. Um, so perhaps we'll start with those and then as more questions come through, we can progress. Um, one was in regard to the class schedule. Um, someone's put in here 11 a.m. to 9 p.m. for the whole week. <laughs> um, so perhaps you could just explain uh, how classes are structured and how um, many contact hours or online hours there are for, for the classes? Sure. Yeah, that's a really good question. Yeah. So the classes are scheduled or timetable Monday to Friday between the times of 11 a.m. and 9 p.m. Now, each unit has four hours of class time and that's normally divided into two two-hour classes. So if you are studying, for example, four units, you would have four units times four hours per unit. So 16 contact hours within that Monday to Friday, 11 a.m. to 9 p.m. timeframe. In addition to that time, the other sort of time commitment, if you like, would be um, the before class and after class activities that I mentioned when we're going through the Moodle page. Obviously time to prepare assessments, study for tests, just general homework. But in terms of the actual timetable and needing to be available to attend class, it is four hours per unit per week. And does that answer your question? It does, it does. And I guess just to, to extend on that, it is the student who gets to um, make their timetable themselves. So um, when the enrolment is open, um, you can either do it yourself or there will, as Joe mentioned, there will be a session to assist you with your enrolment, but you'll be able to select the unit that you wish to study and the class um, that is available for that. Yep, that's right. Uh, just one more question, Joe. Um, would it be fair to say that this course has some engineering content in it? Not, um, not typically. Um, it is the engineering side of it is normally more covered by our engineering diploma. And that's more for students, for example, move, wanting to move into um, mechanical engineering or something like that. The focus of construction management is much more focused on the construction industry and the management of projects rather than how to build a structurally sound building, for example. So it's quite a different focus. I think one of the other key differences between construction and engineering um, is the, the difference in the maths element. So certainly in engineering, there's a much, much heavier focus on maths and obviously needing to use maths and equations um, to be able to, um, I don't know a lot about engineering, but to be able to work out what they need to for exactly things like stress points and things, that's not what we cover in construction. It's much more about the industry itself um, and certainly about building materials. There's a little bit of chemistry in that, um, but beyond that, uh, no, no engineering focus. Um, th there is one unit, which is construction finance, which means a little bit of maths, but that's more sort of accounting type maths rather than, you know, equations and things that you would use in engineering. So quite a different focus. We have had quite a few students who have studied um, engineering and have changed into construction because they're more interested in the focus of the construction rather than um, the engineering component of that. So yeah, a different focus, yep. Does that answer the question? It does, it does. 
And the next question might stretch your knowledge a little bit here because um, it's more, I guess, graduate focused. But just in regards to, uh, I guess, a salary rate or a, a average salary of a graduate, um, and if they do or are required to take any tests to register with a professional body. Yeah, that one I can't answer specifically with the professional bodies because it really does depend on the country in which they're from and their own regulatory bodies. I know for things like engineering, there's like Engineers Australia that is typically recognised in, in many countries. The construction management degree, there are a, a number of governing bodies that do recognise it, but whether they're recognised in the students' home countries, I wouldn't know that. That would be something to check with the authorities in their home countries. Um, now, in terms of graduate salaries, I can only really speak to Australia. I, I, I can't speak in all honesty to those of other countries, um, but a typical student could expect to graduate and earn somewhere between 50 to 70,000 roughly, but it depends very much on um, whether it's private sector, public sector, large scale, small scale, but a typical graduate salary of around that could probably be expected around that 50K upwards. Um, some students though do, as I mentioned before, elect not to go straight into the workplace and they elect to stay on and study. And obviously then the salaries would represent that um, if they're staying on to study further. So it, it does range quite a bit. Yeah. Yep. Um, some, most students um, do go into graduate roles. Some students have come into this course having been tradespeople originally, like they might be a draftsperson, for, some, for example, um, or they've worked in their family's construction firm. And obviously that obviously helps their salary um, once they're finished because they've got some experience as well. Um, so yeah, just the normal things come into play there. Sure. Um, I just want to make a note that I will be uh, emailing uh, a copy of this presentation as well as a link to the recording. And in the email, you also will uh, receive a link to the diploma program, but also the bachelor program at Deakin University. So when you do go on to uh, the Deakin University site, there you'll have all the further subjects that you'll study in years two, three, and four, um, as well as the professional recognitions that the course does have. Um, and then from there, there isn't actually any tests that you need to take for that uh, professional recognition. It's part of the program. So um, in Australia, there's only a few areas where you're required to take additional tests for accreditation, um, but construction management isn't one of those. Okay, we've got some more questions, Jan. There isn't at the moment, so we might just allow a couple more minutes. Um, so if you do have any questions, you can put them in the Q&A anonymously, um, or alternatively, you can put them in the chat function as well to the panelists and we can answer them from there. I do have one question for you, Joe. Um, our trimester three is going online, but are you able to discuss what would happen in the event that uh, classes return face to face uh, with borders being closed or borders reopening? Yeah, that, that's a good question. And uh, that's one that we as an organisation do discuss a lot. Um, Look, essentially with borders being closed, it would be very, very challenging for us to go back um, on campus if the majority of our students are based overseas. So I, I couldn't say because I can't um, know the time frame because we're governed obviously by by the government regulations here in Australia, um, both federally and also locally here with what you, Deakin University decide to do. Um, but I, I would say that if borders are closed, then we would most likely be remaining online for the for the trimester. Um, but we would we always assess that on a really a week by week basis at the moment, um, and we're having lots of meetings to talk about that. Um, but as I said, you know, we're really encouraging our students to use this time. Um, to study. I know it's really hard, you know, people can't travel, um, work opportunities aren't as strong as what they've been in the past. So study is a really good option for students, not only here in Australia, but obviously overseas as well. So um, I, I would think that if, if borders are closed, we would be remaining online. Um, yeah. yeah. And, and the college does also take into account that uh, 
uh, Australian embassies just have reopened and that there is about four, four and a half months uh, backlog of uh, student visa applications. So definitely we recognise that that is something that is taking place, that even when borders open, we still could be waiting for that backlog to be um, processed. So at the moment, the Australian government is allowing students to start online prior to receiving their student visa. So um, you can commence your studies even if your student visa is yet to be granted and you will be able to continue online for that trimester is what Joe has. Correct. Yes, Dan. Yep. Amazing. Well, it doesn't look like there's any more questions coming through, Joe. So thank you so much for your time and thanks to everyone who was a participant today. Oh, we have got one come through. Um, if a participant wants to join on campus studies instead of online, so his education gap will create a problem. Um, at the moment, what I'm going to do, I'll just type in our admissions email in that response. Um, because it is uh, a case by case scenario, just depending on how long uh, the, the gap is um, and also the nationality background uh, of them. So if it's within 12 months, generally that's fine. Uh, that's okay to accept uh, for most nationalities. Um, however, if it's longer than 12 months, we may need to look at that at case by case. Amazing. So we might just wrap it up there. Um, and if anyone does have any further questions, you can email me directly. Um, my email address has been on uh, the registration and will also be on the thank you email that you receive in a couple of days. So thanks, everyone. Take care. Thank you.